Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on vector paths. Now before I begin on the importance of a vector path, let's recap on what a vector is. A vector has both size, magnitude and direction. The length of the line shows its magnitude or its size and the arrowhead points in the direction. Notation is really important with vectors and we use lowercase bold letters like this or sometimes a lowercase letter with a little line underneath it. I'm going to keep to our bold notation in this tutorial. A vector can also be written using capital letters, illustrating the start of our line segment and the end of our line segment. And the arrow indicates our direction. So we pronounce this as the vector AB. Now it's important to remember a column vector is also a way in which we write a vector and gives us quite a lot of information about the vector itself. It's split into a horizontal component and a vertical component. So looking at this example, our vector can be written as 3, 2, illustrating 3 to the right and 2 up. So now we know the fundamentals associated with vectors, let's have a look at some basic applications. Vectors and vector pathways are so incredibly important that you might not even realize we use vectors every day when we're playing games. So let's say you're playing a game using a controller. Let's say you press the red button. Every time you press the red button, the character does an action. This program action can be anything, for example, a jump. Or let's say you press the blue button and the character jumps across. Or the right cursor and the character moves to the right. This uses vectors. Each button performs a motion outlined by the vector, left, right, up, down. This action can be applied anywhere in the game, just like a vector. A vector can exist anywhere in a 2D or 3D plane, as it will always have a fixed magnitude and direction. So what is a vector path? Well, a vector path is a route or path made by summing up vectors. Think about our little character jumping, then jumping to the right, and then moving to the right. It's a summation of our vectors. Now to work out a vector path, it's important that you know how to collect like terms if vectors are given in algebraic notation. It's important to remember to reverse the direction of a vector also changes its sign. For example, vector AB is 3, 2, so vector BA is minus 3, minus 2. And if a vector is given in component form, remember the sum of the horizontals gives the resultant horizontal and the sum of the verticals gives the resultant vertical. So now we have some basic knowledge on vectors and vector paths, let's apply it to some past exam questions. Here the question shows us a parallelogram, A, B, C, D, and the diagonals intersect at the vertex O. We're given the vector O to A is vector A, and we're given the vector O to B is vector B. The question states that we need to write an expression in terms of A and B for the vector CA, the vector BA, and the vector BC. Remember, vectors can be anywhere with the same direction and magnitude. So when the question says it's a parallelogram, this means the vector O to A is not just here, but it's also here as well, as we know the length C to O is exactly the same as O to A. Now looking at the vector O to B, you might be able to spot it's exactly the same vector as D to O. So now we've added a couple more vectors, let's see if we can identify our vector path to make vector C A. Well, to get from vertex C to A, the path is simply C to O and then O to A. So I've written my vector equation here. Well we know vector CO is given as A and we know vector OA is given as A, so therefore the vector CA is simply 2A. Now let's have a look at vector BA. Well we want to get from B to A. We have no vector given here, so let's see if we can identify our vector path. Well, to get from B to A, we can go from B to O, and then O to A. Well, the vector BO is in the opposite direction of OB, 
So therefore it's simply minus b and then we go o to a which is vector a. Therefore our vector ba is simply a minus b or minus b add a. Finally let's have a look at our vector bc. How are we going to get from the vertex b to the vertex c? Well let's identify our vector path. We can go from b to o and then O to C. Remember we're going in the opposite direction of OB so therefore it's minus B then the opposite direction to C to O so it's minus A. Summing this up to give me vector BC is simply minus A minus B. So let's have a look at another exam question. Here the diagram shows a regular hexagon. O to A to B to C to D to E. We know the vector O to A is given as A and we know the vector A to B is given as B. It states that M is the midpoint of OE and N is the midpoint of AB. The question wants us to find vector MN in terms of A and B. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. My advice would be label any additional vectors that you can see on the diagram. So let's have a look at the keywords in our question. It's a regular hexagon, so therefore we have equal lengths. Given the fact that we know vector OA is vector A, Hopefully you've spotted this is the same vector as e to x, also x to b, and also d to c. We also know vector a to b is b, so we can also identify vector ed is also b, as well as ox and xc. Now we have some extra vectors. So let's insert our midpoints. Well, we know our midpoint of AB is N and we know our midpoint of OE is M. Adding additional vectors and as much detail to your diagram will really help you identify those vector paths. So let's have a look at how we can get from vertex M to N by identifying our vector path. Well, to start from M, we have to go half of the vector E to O then vector O to A, and then half of vector A to B. You might spot we're not given vector E to O, so let's work this out first. Well, to get from vertex E to O, we simply go from E to X, then X to O. We know E to X is given by vector A, and we know X to O is the reverse of O to X, which is minus B. So now we know the vector EO, let's substitute it back in. Well, half of vector EO is a half of A minus B. We know vector OA is A, and we know half of vector AB is a half B. Expanding out our brackets, we have a half times A is a half A, a half times minus B is a minus a half B, then we have our a and our half b. Remember, collect our like terms. This gives us our final vector of mn to be 3 over 2a. This was quite a tricky question, but the key is to identify any vectors that you can on your diagram. Let's look at a slightly harder question involving ratios. Here the question gives us a quadrilateral, o to b to p to a. We know vector O to A is given as 6A, we know vector O to B is given as 4B, and we know vector B to P is given as 4A minus B. It states that Y is on the point AP, such that the ratio of A to Y to Y to P is 2 to 1, and we're asked to find the vector O to Y in terms of A and B. Now don't worry about the ratio. Let's do the same as we've done in the last questions and simply label the information on our diagram. The ratio is simply saying that this represents two thirds of AP and this represents one third of AP. 
So I've simply labeled this on our diagram. Now I've labeled this on the diagram. See if you can work out vector OY in terms of AB and press pause if you need. So to get from O to Y, let's identify our vector path. It's simply O to A and then A to Y, which I know is two thirds of AP. Now I know vector OA, but I don't know vector AP. So I'm gonna to have to work that out. So let's have a look how we go from vertex A to P. I'm going to identify another vector path. Well, I'm going to go from A to O, then O to B, and then B to P. I know A to O is the reverse of O to A, so it's minus 6A. O to B is 4B, and B to P is 4A minus B. So collecting our like terms, I now know the vector AP is minus 2A plus 3B. Knowing vector AP, I can put it back into my vector path in order to find OY. This gives me OA is 6A and 2 thirds of vector AP, which I know is minus 2A plus 3B. Expanding this out gives me 6A add 2 thirds multiplied by minus 2A is minus 4 thirds A and 2 thirds multiplied by 3B is simply 2B. Once again, collecting our like terms gives me the final vector of OY to be 14 thirds A add 2B. Now let's have a look at our last question. Here we have a diagram and it states that M is the midpoint of BC and Q is the midpoint of AM. We know the vector AP is given as A. We know the vector P to C is given as 2A. We know the vector CM is given as B and we know the vector PQ is given as C. The first question wants us to identify the vector AM in terms of A and B, and the second question wants us to identify the vector QB, but in terms of C. This is quite a tough question, see if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. So let's start by labeling anything we know from the question. Well, given that we know that M is the midpoint of BC, therefore we know CM is B, so that means we know BM must also be B. Now the question wants us to work out the vector A to M. So starting at A and ending at M, let's identify our vector path. I'm choosing A to P, then P to C, and then C to M. We know A to P is vector A, P to C is given as 2A, and C to M is simply B. Collecting our like terms identifies the vector AM to be simply 3A plus B. Now let's see if we can work out part B, where it wants us to identify the vector QB. The vector path I'm choosing is simply a half AM, remember Q is the midpoint of AM, and then simply M to B. I already know AM from the previous question, and MB is labelled, so therefore I know vector QB is a half of the 3A plus B, add my vector MB is simply B. Expanding and simplifying gives me a half times 3A is 3 over 2A, a half times B is a half B, and then I have my B. Collecting all my like terms gives me the vector QB to be 3 over 2A at 3 over 2B. But the question wants QB in terms of C. So what I need to do is have a look at my vector diagram and identify what is C in terms of A and B. To do this, I'm going to have a look at what I have labeled as C. And you might be able to spot that I know C is PQ. So if I know C is PQ, I'm going to write another vector path to identify what PQ is. 
and then I know what C is. So I'm choosing the vector path P to Q to be P to A and then A to Q. Well I know P to A and I know A to Q because A to Q is a half of A to M. Now let's substitute what I know. Well I know vector P to A is simply minus A and I know half of AM is a half times the 3A plus B. Expanding out I have my minus A a half times our 3a is 3 over 2a and a half times our b is simply half b. Simplifying gives me pq. So now I know pq is a half a add a half b. But I also know pq is c. So therefore I've written c in terms of ab. I know vector c is a half a plus a half b. Now remember the question wanted me to find vector QB. QB is 3 over 2A add 3 over 2B. So I'm going to factorise out and see if I can spot what QB is in terms of C. Well if I take out the common factor of 3, I have 3 bracket a half A add a half B. And I know this is my vector C. So therefore I know vector QB is simply 3C. This was a very hard past exam question and there were quite a few elements but identifying your vector path was the most important way to tackle this question. So in summary we've revisited the fundamentals of vectors and vector notation. With this we recognize the importance of forming a vector path and how there can be many different vector paths which always simplify to give the same answer. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and remember to think about vectors next time you play a computer game. If you liked this video please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next video.